guys, welcome to Hip Hughes History on November 21st, 2013. Um, we're going to take a moment to see if we can explain kind of the top news story of the day. It's a political science, but boom! It was the nuclear option that was instituted in the United States Senate by Harry Reid and the Democrats. So I'd like to frame that out for you, do a little bit of the teaching through the YouTubes, and I think with the giddy up, we're going to see if you can do a little bit of the learning. Let's, let's take her home. All right, so you have to know what the filibuster is, guys. If you don't know what the filibuster is, then you have to go watch that video right there. And I'll wait for a moment as you go watch that video. Hey, now that you know about the filibuster, we can talk about basically what has become filibuster reform in the United States Senate. So what Harry Reid did, I'll just tell you what he did, is he used a parliamentary move, basically a Senate move, to change the rules of the Senate. And this change in the rules of the Senate is changing the way that the filibuster is going to operate in the Senate. So, of course, watching that video before you know that the filibuster requires 60 votes in the United States Senate really to move anything forward. Whether it's a piece of legislation or a nominee for a, a court of appeals spot or it's the uh, you know, nominee to be the CIA director from the president, that the Senate needs 60 votes. So the new rule is, it's a simple majority. So basically, if the party controls the executive branch and controls the Senate, the president basically has free reign to put who they want on the uh, Court of Appeals, the federal district courts, not the Supreme Court, and to appoint to their own cabinet and to executive positions. They, of course, have to round up their party and get everybody in the party on board, but not the other party. So this is a big swipe at kind of minority oversight in the United States. States Senate. So let's take a little bit of a look at the history of the nuclear option and then we'll break it down for you and then you can decide whether this is a good move or a bad move. I think both sides have some pretty powerful arguments and we'll take a look at both of them. Yeah. Alright, so um, if you watch the filibuster video, you know that um, tradition in the Senate is actually that uh, nominees from the president got an up and down vote. This goes all the way up really to the 1960s where the new rules in the late 60s, early 70s. It was actually Richard Nixon who came up with the idea as the president of the Senate. Now, he's the president of the Senate. Who's the president of the Senate, right? Bum, 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 bum. It's the vice president of the United States and Richard Nixon's vice president for Dwight Eisenhower. So he brainstorms and he comes up with this idea that um, to change the rules in the Senate, all you need is a simple majority vote. Now, why is that important? Because the Senate rules say that to change the rules of the Senate, which is what the Senate did today in the whole nuclear option, that you need two-thirds vote. So where does Richard Nixon get this cray-cray idea that you can just change the rules? And this has been you know, refreshed in history. Bill Frisk, who was the leader of the Senate in the early 2000s, uh, Trent Lott even before him, and now Harry Reid have all agreed that this is constitutional. So why is it constitutional? I think the best way to find out is to read the Constitution. So let's take a look first at Article 1, which deals with the legislative branch and what it says about rules. So I'm going to read it right now. Here it comes. Article 1, Section 5. Get your constitutions out. Each house may determine the rules of its proceedings, punish its members for disorderly behavior, and with concurrence of two-thirds expel a member. So the language in the Constitution requires no supermajority for the House or the Senate to make up its own rules. And why is it important? Because it's kind of a negative. It's not in there. Because there are supermajorities in there. In fact, that sentence is followed up. You heard it. That in order to expel a member, you need two-thirds. So what Nixon and Bill Frisk and uh, uh, Trent Lott and Harry Reid are saying is that you know we, with a simple majority, can change the rules. Just because we made a rule What's the, what's the law of the land? It's the Constitution. So that gives us the ability to change the rules. So I think that that would be number one. Number two is we want to take a look at kind of the executive power to nominate people to the federal judge and executive positions and what it says about the Senate's role. So now we're going to go to Article 2, Section 2, which deals with executive power. And he shall nominate, and by and with the advice and consent of the Senate, shall appoint ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls, judges of the Supreme Court, and all other offices of the United States whose appointment are not herein otherwise provided for. 
So bang, bang, again, we have nothing in there but the words advise and consent. So the idea of requiring 60 votes for a nominee to the judicial branch or a nominee to you know, an executive officer spot seems to be unconstitutional if you go through this argument. So when we're calling it the nuclear option, people that believe in it don't call it the nuclear option. They call it the constitutional option. Now, nuclear option has a different connotation, so I want to explain that too. And that is basically that you have lost launched a strike on the other party. Now, we're not going to lie, okay? The Republicans also had this idea. Um, we talked about before Trent Lott and Bill Frisk both threatening the idea of the nuclear option, saying that it was a legitimate form of uh, rule change in the Senate and that they could exercise it, but then they used that as kind of a compromise technique in order to create um, some leverage on the Democrats. Eventually, a group was called the Gang of 14 was formed, and this seven Democrats, seven Republicans, Republican bloc in the Senate was basically like the big kids in the room that were going to avoid these kinds of confrontations. And uh, the idea was that they would only filibuster judicial nominees and executive appointments for extraordinary reasons. So the filibuster wouldn't be used lightly. Now that kind of devolved into chaos. Um, under Bill Clinton, and this was actually before this compromise, I believe he had 60 judicial nominees that got blocked up. George Bush at the time of this compromise had 10 nominees blocked up and now if you take um, all of Obama's filibustered appointments I believe they represent half of all filibustered appointments in the history of the Republic. So, and the Democratic viewpoint, this is no longer being used for extraordinary means. It's just being used to logjam the president. Not because they oppose the nominee, but because they oppose the president. So they're, in a sense, abusing the filibuster. So the Democrats took this position and they exercised the nuclear option as the Republicans were filibustering um, one of the judicial nominees for the Court of Appeals in Washington, D.C., one of the Democrats basically said, um, uh, I want to vote now. And every other circumstance, the, uh, the presiding officer, the president pro temp, who I believe is uh, would be Leary Lee, uh, Leahy, uh, Senator Leahy from Vermont, would basically say, no, you know, you can't do that. You need 60 votes for cloture. You need 60 votes in order to stop the filibuster. But this time he said, dude, I agree. We're going to vote. And of course, then the Republicans go, whoa, Nelly!" And they appeal. They appeal to the chair. They say, you can't do that. Precedent says, you know, past decisions, Senate rules say that you need cloture to shut this bad boy down. And then basically what happens is that appeal fails. They vote. They vote. All 100 senators vote. 48 vote for the appeal. 52 vote against the appeal, which means the appeal is tabled, is put to the side, and the new rule becomes precedent. So it's called a nuclear option because one side did it to the other and there's bound to be some type of retribution. And I think that's where the fiery language uh, kind of comes into play. So here we are now, right? So all of these Obama nominees for the judiciary and for executive appointments should be pretty smooth sailing. And of course, this means that if the Republicans win the next election and the presidency and the Senate, then they're going to be able to do the exact same thing. So you might want to be careful what you wish for. But on the other side, the argument was that, look, this was interfering with the president's ability to do his job. If you oppose a nominee, then oppose a nominee for you know good ideological or factual reasons just don't like block up the whole government from occurring. So those are basically the two sides. We'll see what happens. Kind of one mental side. Side note, right? This doesn't apply to the Supreme Court. They didn't want to change that rule because it's the highest court in the land and there's only nine appointees and you certainly don't want someone just going through for political reasons. You want, um, you know, 60 votes for that. At least that was the uh, reckoning that the Democrats came to. So here we are, guys, all right? Point of order. What do you guys think? Was the nuclear option a good thing for the Democrats to do? Was it a political move? Was it a long-term good move for the country? Um, is it going to come back to bite them? I want to know what you think, and I like watching you guys fight. It's like comment to your fighting. I don't know. I should sell tickets or something. Um, if you haven't checked out other lectures, guys, make sure you subscribe and check out other lectures. And if you go down to the comments below, check out some of my EDU gangster peeps down there that do do like the uh, teaching as much as uh, you guys like the learning. There we go, guys. Where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you next time on the YouTubes when you press the buttons. There you go.